In this video, we're gonna show you four different ways to connect your computer, whether it's a PC or a Mac, to a full sound system using a powered subwoofer and powered studio monitors. In this video, we're using the Atom Audio T10S powered subwoofer and the Atom Audio T5V powered studio monitors. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, the sub, the speakers, the cables, anything that we need in order to make this setup work, we have links to everything down in the description below where you can find everything from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Now, before we get started, we do have one thing to cover off, and that's the difference between a balanced and unbalanced audio cable. In this video, the first two methods that we're gonna show you are unbalanced, and the second two methods that we're gonna show you are fully balanced. What's the difference between balanced and unbalanced? The quick answer is that unbalanced cables should not be run for more than 10 feet, and they're more susceptible to things like noise and interference. Balanced cables, on the other hand, have a theoretical distance of up to 1,000 feet without any noise or obvious degradation in sound quality. It's a pretty big difference between both systems. So how do you know if your cable is balanced or unbalanced? Let's talk about unbalanced. An unbalanced cable would be an RCA cable or an unbalanced quarter-inch cable. You can see here that I have two quarter-inch jacks in my hand. The first one here has two sections. It has a tip and a sleeve. This is unbalanced. So RCA, or an unbalanced tip sleeve quarter inch cable, would be unbalanced. On the balanced side, you can see the other quarter inch jack that I have here has three sections. It has the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. This is a balanced quarter inch jack, also known as a TRS, tip ring sleeve quarter inch jack. Another balanced cable would be an XLR cable. Okay, next let's talk about how this works when we set it up. Basically what you need to know is that the subwoofer is the brains of the operation here. We need to get all of our audio from your computer, PC or Mac, into the subwoofer, and then the subwoofer will send audio to your left and right powered speakers. The subwoofer will also determine which frequency ranges go to which speakers. If you can imagine you're adding a subwoofer to your setup, you don't want your powered studio monitor to be worried about those sub bass frequencies anymore. You want the subwoofer to tell it to only worry about the frequencies that this speaker is optimized for. How do you do that? It's called a crossover or a high pass filter. Basically on the back of the subwoofer here, you can see this crossover section. You can determine where the crossover is in the frequency range between the subwoofer and your speakers. For the setup that I have here, the manual recommends that I have the subwoofer work on 80 hertz or lower, and I have the power studio monitors working on 80 hertz or higher. If you want to extend the range of the sub, you can flick the switch here to 120 hertz. That will extend the range of the sub and limit the range of your powered speakers even further. If you want to bypass all this and you want all your speakers just to go try to take the whole sound no matter what with no processing from the sub, you can hit bypass. But it is recommended that you have this somewhere between 80 and 120 hertz, and I choose 80 hertz. Okay, so now we gotta connect everything. The first method that we're gonna do here is basically gonna use a cable like this. This will take the headphone output of your computer and convert it to RCA left and right. Let's connect that now. Once you've connected the headphone output of your, your computer, you can connect on the subwoofer. Now, two things here. As you can see here, we plugged into the top. It says in, and right below there's an out section. That out is how we're going to connect to the other powered speaker here. The other thing you need to always remember is that with RCA cables, there's usually a black or white cable, and then there's a red cable. Red is always right. That's the way that all audio is designed. Red is the right channel of your audio. Next, as you can see here, we need to connect these outputs on the left and right side to the other speaker using another RCA cable. To do that, I have a plain old RCA cable here. So we're gonna connect that now. Okay, so once we made our left and right connections there, you can see here that we're going in on the right side and out on the right side to our right speaker. 
And you can see that we've gone in on the left side and out on the left side to our left speaker. Then you can power it on and try play some music. Let's see what that sounds like. So there, the system is working correctly. This is the first method and it is unbalanced. Okay, so what if your subwoofer doesn't have RCA inputs? For method two, it's identical to method one, except it would be based on quarter inch. So we'd take a cable like this that would take the headphone output of your computer, PC or Mac, and give you two unbalanced PS quarter inch jacks. So you would not want to run this longer than 10 feet. Then you take this and go into your, the back of your subwoofer and distribute it again. Now, as you can see here, this system from Atom Audio does not have quarter inch inputs, so I can't actually demo it for you, but it would be exactly the same. Connect it to your computer, you go into the sub, and then you use another unbalanced quarter inch cable to go from the sub into your left and right studio monitors. I'll have a link to all the cables that you need for that method down below. Okay, so so far we've discussed two unbalanced methods. What happens if you want to upgrade that to be fully balanced, studio grade, audio quality, going to your subwoofer and speakers? In order to do that, you need some type of digital audio interface. What this would do is it takes a full digital signal from your computer, it converts it to an analog signal for your speakers, and on the back here, it has balanced quarter inch outputs. These balanced quarter inch outputs will give you more consistency with your audio to a sound system like this. Let's set this up. Okay, so we plugged in the audio interface to our computer and connected it. So the next what you would do for option three here is you'd use a balanced TRS quarter inch jack to come out of the back of this audio interface into the back of your subwoofer. Now, as I mentioned, our subwoofer here does not have quarter inch TRS inputs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to method number four. Method number four is exactly the same as this, except we're converting this quarter inch cable to XLR. So let's work through that method now. So as mentioned for method number four, we need some cables like this. This will take a balanced quarter inch output of our audio interface here, and it'll convert it to a balanced XLR input that we can plug into the subwoofer. I'm gonna connect this to the back of our audio interface. Now you can get cables like this of all different sizes. But for our purposes today, I just have these short ones. So you can extend this as long as you need up to a thousand feet theoretically with any XLR cable that you can find. So we're gonna connect some other XLR cables to this to give us the extra distance that we need. So coming out of the left output of our audio interface here, I'm gonna connect an XLR cable. This is a white XLR cable just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm gonna connect that to the left input on the subwoofer. Next, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the right side. I'm gonna extend our XLR output from our audio interface with a red XLR cable, and then I'm gonna connect that XLR cable to the back of the subwoofer. And next, I'm gonna walk around the outside and connect the left and right outputs of the subwoofer into our powered speakers. Okay, so now we've connected everything to the subwoofer from our audio interface and from our subwoofer to our left and right speaker. So let's turn it up and see how it sounds. So there you can see the system is working correctly and that's everything that you need to know. Four different ways that you can connect your computer to your subwoofer and powered speakers using both unbalanced or balanced methods. Unbalanced again, use really short cables as short as possible to avoid getting interference and balanced cables are a more pro-grade solution that'll give you more consistency and more quality in your audio. If this video has been helpful, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and give us a like. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you've seen in this video, we have some links down in the description below. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.